Daniel Pascal with White Rock Coffee, and today we're going to be taking you guys through a brew guide for our strawberry pink bourbon coffee. This coffee comes from the Quindío region of Colombia by way of our friends at CoffeeNet. One of the amazing parts of this coffee is simply that it undergoes a very unique co-fermentation. So this coffee is taken with strawberries and wine yeast. It's fermented in a multi-stage uh, outdoor, indoor, inside of tanks and it gives it this absolutely incredible, prominent strawberry fruit kind of taste profile to the coffee. Let's go over a few things that we're going to use today for this brew guide. So today we're going to be using our Kalita. So this is a single cup pour over dripper. We found really good results with the Kalita because this is such a heavily fermented coffee. The beans are very, very soluble for that reason. So we get a lot of flavor coming out really up front, really quickly. So the Kalita, since it has multiple exit holes on the bottom, is really great for that purpose, as opposed to something conical for this coffee. For our recipe, we're gonna be using 20 grams of coffee at a one to 17 ratio. So we're going to have about 340 grams of coffee by the end. And the temperature of our kettle is gonna be somewhere around 204 degrees. You want it somewhere around that 205 region, anywhere between 200 and 205 is gonna be good. The first thing that we're going to do is pre-wet our filter. I like to use my offhand and just kind of place down the filter inside of the Kalita. Start with water in the bottom and then go all the way up the walls and make sure that everything is saturated in there. This is going to get rid of any papery taste that the filter has beforehand. Next up, we're going to go ahead and place our coffee right in the bottom of the Kalita. So our 20 grams goes right in here. And before we start pouring our water, we're going to make sure that we are kind of swaying side to side the bed of coffee and making sure that it's as flat as can be on top of the bed of coffee. This is going to help all the water saturate through as evenly as we can get. Okay, so once we're starting a brew, we're going to go ahead and hit start on our timer and we are going to pour 60 grams of water over our bed of coffee. So this is going to be our blooming stage. The 60 grams is roughly about three times the weight of the coffee once we started. This is a pretty good amount to saturate the bed ahead of time and make sure that we've kind of off-gassed it and no CO2 or anything is interfering the way that water is traveling through the coffee. We're going to wait for about 60 seconds. So for this pour over method that we're doing today, we're going to be utilizing a single pour method. So once we hit 60 seconds on our timer, we're just going to start pouring directly into the middle of our bed of coffee. And we're going to start doing orbits around that point until we get to the wall where the paper filter is. And then we'll start orbiting back into the center. We're gonna continue with this pouring method until we hit 340 uh, grams and that'll be the total amount of coffee that we're brewing with today. We mentioned earlier that this coffee is really, really soluble. It works very well with under one single pour of water. All of our testing found that this single pour method resulted in the juiciest body and texture to the coffee and the most prominent distinct flavor notes to it as well. So this single pour method is going to put us exactly where we want to be. And eventually we should fill up the Kalita most of the way full, probably about 75%. And then we'll hit a point where essentially there's an equilibrium between how much water we're adding and how much coffee is exiting at the same time. So then once we've, we're done, we've hit our 340 grams, we'll do a light stirring motion around the inside of the filter. Make sure to collect any grounds off of the inside of that wall and that they're all going to drip through at the same rate by the end of this brew. We're targeting around three minutes total time for this brew. This coffee is pretty lightly roasted, so there's naturally supposed to be a high amount of acidity. It lends well to that fruity and floral characteristic to the coffee. So we want to make sure that we accentuate that rather than take the brew um, too long, like somewhere in the four minute range and dull down it too much. Now that we have our coffee ready to go here, place this over to the side, side of the way, and have a little bit of a taste. Mm. So what we're looking for with this coffee in terms of flavor notes is, of course, strawberry. There's supposed to be an extremely prominent, juicy, strawberry pulp kind of flavor profile to this coffee. 
But one of the other beautiful notes that's very prominent in it is passion fruit. Um, passion fruit is also going to be a really strong note along with that strawberry. And at a 1 to 17 ratio, as opposed to some lower ratios that we could have used, like 1 to 16, 1 to 15, we're also seeing a little bit of florality there as well. There's this kind of jasmine-y um, background note to this coffee. That's it for our brew guide for our Columbia Pink for Bone coffee. So it's available online and in stores now. So feel free to go ahead and pick that up. We can't wait for you guys to try it. And if you want to learn more about how we brewed coffee in this video today, we also offer educational classes out of our lab. So go to wrcoffee.com, click on the education tab, and find out more about what we offer there. Thanks. No, 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 no.